Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ginger Lean Podcast in 1.5 <laughs> speed. What's that? You're not listening to us 1.5 speed, but I bet you thought you were. <laughs> that was too fast. This episode is brought to you by the farmer's dog. It's time to start feeding your dog better food, not higher processed crap that they're probably eating now. Nothing against you. <laughs> oh my God, you've already <laughs> insulted our listeners and <laughs> tricked them. <laughs> the farmer's dog is giving you a great offer. You get 50% off your two-week trial of fresh, healthy food for your dog by going to thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian or click the link in the description. Plus, you get free shipping. Also, guys, if you're looking to build a website. You're really pleased with yourself, Squarespace you? is the way to do oh it. Oh, my God. So whatever website you have in mind for your business or your hobby, online store, domain, make it with Squarespace. A dream is just a great idea. A dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. Make it a reality with Squarespace right now. Head to squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian for a free trial. And then also to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with that URL. Click the link in the description. Check it out. What's Carmen doing? He's carpet swimming. Oh, okay. Why? I heard him like sneeze cough into the carpet. It was just... Marble. That's What's that Marble area doing? is not for you. He's going to sniff the Howdy Partners. This is the Halloween y well, not even really a Halloween episode yet because it's not Halloween yet. We should just do scary stuff all month. All right. And we're like halfway through the month already. So we're just a little like late for on a this. A couple weeks. We're a little late on this, but we're gonna do some spooky stuff. What up, it's your girl Kel- careful with that match, Kelsey. You're looking Bright and beautiful today, Kelsey. Thank you. Are you being careful with all of your matches? Always. Where'd you get that outfit? The, the careful bin. I was just genuinely asking where you got it, but oh, Benabay sent it to me a long time ago. Really? Yeah. What does that say? It says Benabay. It's honestly benefit for some reason just decided like they occasionally like to send me some mascaras and stuff, and I feel like such a beauty guru. You're a bureau. Kermit, don't kick me. Kermit, no. There's a bed right there for you. Why do we have to go through this every week? Go lay down. Jeez. Kermit, lay down. You can't sit with careful with that match, Kelsey. Kermit, right now. go away. Marvel's laying on the carpet. He forgot where he is. Well, what we thought we would do for this episode was read scary stories. And these are true, right? I found a website called darkness prevails where one of the categories is true scary stories and i let me tell you i was looking through them last night and it was dark out and the darkness prevail dude i was i was getting scared were you careful with that match you're laughing now she's (laughs) making jokes now but let the record show i haven't read any of these i'm ready to be scared i'm ready to be scared so there's a few of them that i've read Obviously, just because I want to make sure they're good, but then there's also a bunch that I haven't. So if there are some bad ones, don't worry. It's Kelsey's fault, not mine. Um, it is not. But so I got um, my goyle. We're going to cuddle up together. So there's also um, a story I wanted to share on Unresolved Mysteries. This one is very, very highly touted by the Unsolved Unresolved Mysteries subreddit, and it was called The Myster- Mysterious Disappearance of Brandon Lawson. And I haven't read it yet, but it's looks good. So we can get to that one, too, if you want. I keep thinking that some of these at the end, it's just going to be like a giant troll. No, none of these are trolls. None of them? Mm, not that I know And of. you've read them? I've read a, a handful of them. All right, let's see. And they're scary? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> and they're real? Uh, they, they are, are they real. Are they real monsters? These are real. These are real. It's a great television okay, show. Okay, I'm going to start pretty light, okay? We're going to start pretty light. This one's called Skinwalker. Ew. All right, I'm done. That done by scary. Siren. Okay. That was scary. Just It's over. You have to let me read. <sighs> okay. Just sharing my quick story. I had zero idea what I had seen until listening to some of your stories. I lived in a small... Kermit, literally, dude, you're ruining everything. Go <laughs> go in your bed. Go on. Nothing's go as on. scary go. as Kermit when he needs something. Why can't they just leave? Because he wants to sit in my lap. But fuck that. We're working. He's a beautiful little boy. God, put your tongue in your mouth and lay down, boy. <laughs> He has like a luxurious furry bed on the ground right here too. Lay down. I lived in a small farming village about 300 uh, of about 300 for a few years. 300 people and lived in the village. The area was rather close to the largest Adena burial mounds in my state. So I don't know what it, do you know what that is? Adena burial? 
I don't know if it's controversial to say Indian burial, but like Native American burial Is that burial what that's grounds. referring to? Okay. Yeah. Some of the most haunted places. I've been living in our house for about a year Sorry now. Sorry if I offended you. I'm not trying to. And I recently gotten a dog who is training to be my service dog because I have multiple sclerosis and I have severe balance issues. Well, about three months after getting him, it was around 2 a.m. in the morning. You don't need to say in the morning. Uh, and I was in the kitchen getting a drink. I heard my dog outside barking. It was not uncommon for this to happen as I worked the night shift from home and I would let him out to potty. Me. Uh, the thing is, I did not recall letting him outside. So I brushed it off as a MS memory lapse and I went back to get him. But he wasn't at the base of our... Sorry, I went out to get him, but he was at the base of our 25-foot wheelchair ramp refusing to come inside. So he was outside. That's strange because... He was doing great in his training, and he knew to come when called. ASAP. I remember getting frustrated with him, as this is very out of character. The light from our solar spotlight was dim, and I looked at my dog. Something was off about his appearance. His hind legs suddenly seemed taller than his back legs. Wait, aren't those the same thing? (laughs) Front legs, I think they mean. His hind legs seemed taller than his front legs, but they wrote back legs. Oh, okay. That's those are the same thing. Wait, right? so he's tipping down, or he's like? I think up his butt high. is higher up. Oh, like his, his hind butt's legs high. are taller okay. than his front legs. All right. For, I mean, for the record, any any ghost story involving a dog barking, I'm already scared. And I noticed I couldn't see his normally fluffy tail wagging. It literally never stops wagging. He stood there barking at me, and his bark sounded off too. Okay. It sounded almost as if a human was trying to imitate a dog bark. <gasps> Stop, stop, stop. I'm getting chills. It was a good imitation, but it was not a dog bark. I figured all this was just due to my tired state and my lack of caffeine in my system. I started to slowly walk down the ramp when suddenly I heard my dog behind me, clawing at the back door trying to get out. He was snarling. I had never heard him snarl, and I have not heard this from him since. It was then I realized something was wrong, and I went inside and locked the door. I honestly thought it was just beyond the point of exhaustion. However, the hair on the back uh, of his neck was standing straight up. Ever see a long-haired golden retriever have hair standing on on end? He looks scary even to me, and I'm his handler. I went to my computer after this and logged out and went to bed. I just could not deal with it. The entire night, my dog laid on my feet on the bed, not moving. It was not until I listened to a few of your native legends that I realized this I was not crazy. I finally broke down and told my husband of the occurrence, and the first thing he said to me is, that was a skinwalker. My husband is Native, Amer- native American and grew up hearing stories about things that go bump in the night. It scares me to think about even to this day. True story. Can, I need closure. Can okay. you please Google what a skinwalker is? Because that is so... In Navajo terrifying. culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise himself as an animal. Blech. The term is not used for healers. For healers. Okay, the picture of it looks like an elk that's sort of a skeleton. That had a weird night. Ooh. Animals associated with w- witchcraft usually include tricksters such as the coyote, but can include other creatures, usually those associated with death or bad omens. Skinwalker stories are told among Navajo children, maybe um, complete life and death struggles that in, end, end in either Skinwalker or Navajo killing the other or partial encounter stories that end in a stalemate. So that's... I a thousand percent believe that. A thousand percent. Because I know that like Native American burial grounds are like some of the most haunted, creepy, scary stuff goes on. Yeah. Creepy as hell, dude. But like a lot of it, like I've never heard of a skinwalker, but a lot of it is like, like even where I grew up, there were places where you could go and like, you know, it's extra scary or you like sit in this certain like place and allegedly someone will push you, you know. A lot of it is like if you're going there with the intention of like messing around, something will mess with you back. But I did not know that that included lore of things that just walked around and scared the fuck out of you. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Creepy for sure. Okay, anytime that a dog is barking at something, I'm like, I believe you a thousand you know, percent. You all, that's the first thing. Anytime they bark at something that's not apparent, that's the first thing you go to. You're like, oh man, is there like a spirit or what the hell is happening? Because they're in tune with shit that we're not. And kids too. Kids, kids and barking? animals. No, not kids barking. 
Oh. Like kids Well, seeing that would probably stuff. also be something of concern. Kids, kids seeing stuff barking. and like talking to people that aren't, aren't there, that aren't like their imaginary friend. Mm -hmm. Like a thousand believe them. A thousand yeah. percent believe them. Mm -hmm. That is terrifying. Creepy, creepy. Well, now I'm scared of skinwalkers. Thanks for that, Julian. You're welcome. This one is called The Clown in the Woods. So I'm a police officer. Well, uh, so by the way, I haven't read this one. I read the Skinwalker one. Okay. Okay. And some of these are written poorly. <laughs> like it doesn't flow right. Like this first sentence. So I'm a police officer, well, special constable to be truthful. Oh. But what I saw in the woods uh, will might will might stay with me for life. Mm -hmm. I was working the night shift two nights ago downtown in the city center. Okay for a Friday night. Yeah, this is. Wow. Um, was the it was bad. What, There's Cop? just no commas or periods. It was bad members of the public getting drunk, also starting fights after the bars had closed. Hey, 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 what? hey. What? People that get drunk at bars are not bad members of the public. Okay, we like fun. I had only just gotten back uh, out to the station after taking a young male around the age of 16 who had been underage drinking. Ooh, okay. After taking him to the station and getting back on patrol after doing the paperwork on him, it was, uh, it was a good two and a half hours after getting back out and nothing what happening 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 nothing happening i got a call from control telling me that there was a 999 call and the caller said that he was in the woods what's a 999 probably similar to uh, let's see nine let's see oh we love a detective 999 call meaning um, uh, emergency telephone number in a number of countries okay so it's just not like 911 outside of the us i think okay so this might not be in the united states mm -hmm. okay so he's called to the woods, but when I got there and cut off my sirens, but kept my blue emergency lights on flashing uh, along with my headlights, this is really, really difficult to read. And getting to the end of the woods, there was a building. After getting to the, after getting to the building and not seeing anyone, I contacted my control room and told them that it might just be a prank called in by the youths or the youth and was going to check the building out um, if I... I'm just going to read it as is. And if needed, stay with them until their mother and father slash carer comes back and tell them why I am there. As soon as I got out of my car and only being um, crude alone, so he didn't have a partner. That's scary as it is. Being a um, police officer I up, and responding to a call in the yeah, middle of the woods at like an abandoned no partner. building. Yeah. Hell no. Walked up to the door. Noticed, <laughs> I'm sick today. I can't come in. <laughs> I noticed there was a, a song coming from within the building mm -hmm. along with laughing. I knocked on the door and someone turned down the song and the door slowly opened. When I went into the building and checked everywhere, could not see a single person. That's when I was about to leave the building when I saw nine or ten people dressed up as clowns all holding hunting knives near the back door. Fun. So this is in England, actually. Yep. This being England and me not being able to carry a weapon on my person Seeing them all have knives, I ran to my car all the while reaching to my radio emergency button on top and getting no response from control room back at HQ. I got back in my car, revved out of the woods, and drove away, still trying to reach help when I remembered my phone and called 999, told the operator who I was. She put me through the police and the control room was asking why I wasn't answering my radio. Before I could explain, I heard an explosion and saw smoke and fire coming from the woods where I told control what had just happened. They told me to keep every to keep everyone back and the fire services are on their way as they speak. After the fire services put out the fire, I went I went in to see for myself and I saw the building the clowns were in and a little note that read Happy Halloween Pig signed Killer Miller. What the fuck? So it was very hard to decipher. I, I was trying my best, but it sounded like he went to a call to this abandoned like, like building Walked inside, saw 10 people dressed as clowns with knives. Sprinted the got the fuck out of there. They on, blew up the building. They blew up the building and left a note saying, Happy Halloween, pig. Sick. Cool. That's a scary story because it's not like paranormal or supernatural. It's like very real. It's just like yeah. people being terrible. Mm-hmm. Fun. Mm-hmm. Those are always fun. I believe that as well. <laughs> Yeah, right? I mean, there are people out there who just really don't like cops. And there was also, um, so I was reading through and there was this like, 
like because uh, I was searching through Reddit a bunch of scary stories, and one of them was like the kid is upstairs in his bedroom calling his parent, and he's like, "I think something's in my closet." And then they go check in the closet, and the kid's in the closet, and he's like, "There's something in my bed." Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, it's good, right? Boo. Don't do that. No, don't. Mm-mm. Okay. All right, let's try this one. This one's called Tall Tales. Okay. I used to work at Goodwill. As you can guess, I met a lot of interesting people there. Honestly, it felt like I was uh, gathering new weird toys by the day. (laughs) New weird stories by the day, sorry. And soon, uh, things just stopped phasing me. Here are a few of my favorite stories off the top of my head. So there's multiple. Okay. One, I just started working at Goodwill and had been there maybe a week when a young man drove up to the donation center. I didn't pay much mind to him until a coworker, who, if you ask me, was a little off her rocker, came running up to me shouting complete Spill nonsense. Spill that tea. I tell her to slow down, tell me what was going on. Apparently, the young man in the truck was a guy I went to high school with who had just been charged with, wow, raping a 16-year-old girl in the park. It sent chills down my spine because it was that was then when I realized horrible people aren't just the people you read about in the news. They're the people you go to school with. Okay, this is to make matters worse. My coworker ran out of the donation doors, began shouting obscenities. Okay, that's not really spooky. That's just like horrible. That's just horrible. Hmm. Let's go on to the next one. Let's go to this one, actually. The Mysterious Disappearance of Brandon Lawson. Yeah, I'm all set with stories like that. Below is some information I was able to. So there's a lot of threads on this on this story, but this is this seemed to be like the longest, most comprehensive one I could find. Brandon Lawson was a 26 year old man from San Angelino, Texas. He was an oil field worker and a father of four children. He also had a common whoa, law. Whoa, whoa, whoa! 26. He's got four kids. Mm-hmm. Damn. He was also. Um, he had a common law wife named Ladessa Lofton. Fun, but you should put a ring on her finger, Brandon. He's described as being five foot nine inches tall, weighing approximately two hundred thirty pounds, Caucasian male with brown hair and blue eyes. Lawson has multiple tattoos on his arms and a scar on his chin and left knee. One of his ears is pierced. At the time of his disappearance, Lawson was wearing a yellow shirt, camouflage print shorts, and white twenty thirteen Air Max shoes. August eighth, twenty thirteen was the last time Brandon was seen in San Angelino, Texas. He and a longtime girlfriend, his longtime girlfriend, had gotten into an argument which led to Brandon leaving the home around 11.54 p.m. with the intentions of going to his father's residence. Approximately 45 minutes later, Brandon calls, calls his brother, Kyle, to tell him that he had run out of gas. What is known is that following his phone call to his brother, Kyle, something happened and Brandon phoned 911 and advised the dispatcher that he was in a field, needed help, and that he needed a cop. The dispatcher heard Brandon say, I ran into somebody and responded to him, uh, ran into them. Okay. Another call was made to 911 by a passerby trucker regarding Brandon's truck parked crooked on the side of the road, posing a hazard. Kyle and his uh, girlfriend, Audrey, went out to bring Brandon uh, his gas can. Kyle and his girlfriend um, phoned Ledessa to tell her that Brandon had run out of gas and that he needed their gas can. Ledessa told him that she would not leave. This is uh, Ledessa told him she would not leave on the porch as she was going to have a shower. Okay, so is she Ledessa Brandon's girlfriend? Yes. Okay. Or yeah, common law partner. Right. Uh, Kyle Kyle's checks, however, did not clear in his bank account, so he had no money to fill the gas, and figured when he got to Brandon, he could just drive him to Stripes Convenient Market, and Brandon would pay for the gas himself. Uh, the truck was located on US 227, four and a half miles south of Bronte, Texas, and close to a rest stop. By the time Kyle arrived, about around 1, 10 a.m. on August 9th, there was no sign of Brandon. There was also a sheriff's deputy that had arrived at the truck about the same time as Kyle and Audrey. There was no so visible. So over an hour later, a cop got to him. Over an hour, yeah, yeah he hour, made like a nine one one call, like a little just before midnight. Oh my God. So they arrive and the cops are already there. Um, There was no visible damage to Brandon's truck and his keys and cell phone were all missing. It's understood that the the deputy nor Kyle uh, were aware that Brandon phoned 911 asking for a cop as well as stating, please hurry. Huh. While talking with the deputy, Kyle received a call from Brandon in which Brandon's cell was going in and out and he was hard to understand. 
Brandon claimed that he was 10 minutes up the road. He also mentioned that he was bleeding. The phone went dead at this point. What Kyle understood was, I'm in the field. Kyle felt maybe Brandon was hiding in the field due to an outstanding warrant from two years ago that Brandon himself just learned he was going to address the following week. So Kyle made no mention of the deputy of Brandon being on the phone. So he was pro- trying, trying to cover for mm. him in case he was going to get arrested. Um, so basically, Kyle talks to him, doesn't tell the cop. Had Kyle known Brandon phoned 911, he would have never assumed his brother was hiding. So that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So he didn't even know his brother called the cops. It was confirmed <clears throat> that the gas tank was in fact empty. His cell phone was a Motorola Droid Razor. There was an extensive search of the area which turned up no sign of him. However, he has never been heard from again. Lawson's family were unaware he called 911 that night and only found out when they viewed his cellular phone records. Around 1.18, Audrey sends uh, Brandon a text saying, a cop is at your truck. It is assumed she did so um, to warn him because of his warrant. At this time, they were not aware that he himself called 911 and said, please hurry. In statements given to the police, as explained by the family, they did admit Brandon's earlier call to them in which he told his brother and Audrey that he was 10 minutes up the road and was bleeding. This was also not reported to Deputy Neal at the scene. It's understood that Deputy Neal did not report to Kyle that Brandon phoned 911. So nobody was talking to each other here. The cop didn't say, hey, your brother called the cops, and they're, and they're withholding the fact that they received a call from him on the spot. Mm-hmm. Um, from, from all media reports written by the Observer Enterprise, which happens to be owned by the sheriff and his wife, um, the 911 call was only reported as a stranded motorist who ran out of gas. There was no mention of urgency nor any mentions of, fra- of the phrase, I ran into them, as understood by the dispatcher. The deputy then put emergency flashers on, locked the truck, and proceeded to leave the scene and arranged for a tow in the morning. According to reports, the, de- the de- deputy did drive up and down the freeway or the highway to see if he could spot Brandon walking. Kyle and his girlfriend left the empty gas can by- beside the truck, thinking if Brandon came back, he would at least have the can to retrieve gas. They began to go look for him. It was the following morning that there was still no sign of Brandon. Kyle's money was now available in his account. He went back to the truck and filled the can and returned it to the truck. At this point, he was now starting to become concerned and felt that Brandon may not have been hiding and may actually be in trouble. In talking with investigators, he now gave them the full account of Brandon being on the phone with them at the time the deputy was at the truck. It wasn't known by Brandon's family that he called 911 until Brandon's common-law wife, Ledessa, saw on the itemized cell phone transactions provided by law enforcement that a 911 call was made. There's been no activity on Brandon's bank accounts or his cell phone since that time. An extensive search was conducted by professional search and rescue October 24, 2013, around the area of the abandoned truck. Brandon's family doesn't believe that the outstanding felon, felony warrant is connected to his disappearance and, he, disappearance, and he believes that he would not have run from the police because of it. He worked in the oil industry at the time of his disappearance and left behind four children, three with his girlfriend, one with a uh, prior relationship. Although investigators have stated that there is no evidence of foul play in this case, his family stated it's uncharacteristic of him to leave without warning and they're afraid for his safety. He's classified as an involuntary mis involuntarily missing person and the case remains unsolved over the years there have been many false information many pieces of false information put out by the media um here are just a few examples law enforcement concludes man not in coke county the statement is ludicrous just because brennan hasn't been found yet doesn't mean he's somehow no longer in the county members of Members of Texas search and rescue um, and various law enforcement agencies began arriving last Wednesday uh, evening for Thursday's massive search for Brandon Lawson. The latest items, um, sorry, the latest search stems from the incident that occurred just before 1 a.m. on Friday. Um, She fails to mention that the particular 911 call was made by a passing motorist, a trucker who thought Brandon's truck was parked unsafely on the street. Okay, so... That's kind of it. And it remains unsolved. Wow. Um, I don't know. I thought that was going somewhere kind of else, but... That's crazy, though. Yeah. I mean, this was posted a, like one, one year ago, and that's all the updates they have. It's crazy, like, because you're expecting something wild, but this is, like, a real story. hmm You know? What the fuck did... What does his family think happened to him? I don't know, man. 
I'm reading through the comments. It's kind of wild. A few questions. Was Brandon a felon? If he was, did he own a gun legally or illegally? If he usually had a gun in his truck, was the gun abandoned in the truck or was it missing? Well, I think the whole point of them, like not the whole miscommunication about the phone call to 911 is that if someone has an outstanding warrant and they're aware of it, you have to be in a real emergency in order to call 911. So they were sort of covering for him because the cop was there, yeah. but then they realized that he actually had called 911. Like yeah. you're 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 giving up everything you have at that point of, you know, not getting arrested. You're getting arrested after mm-hmm. you get help, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So he was in a very serious situation that he called the cops. Hmm. And he was bleeding in the field. Like, he must have run out of gas, right? Yeah, people and are saying they'd be surprised if he didn't have a gun. Something happened to him mm-hmm. on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And then where do you go? I don't know. It's weird that there's there's been no report of, like, a body found or anything like that. That's that's creepy to me. But that not that, like, serial killer people do shit like that? I'm sorry, that sounds so dumb. What? But, like, aren't there plenty of people who have died from you know, their car breaks down and then someone offers to help them and just does really fucked up shit to them? Or is that just all movies? No, that's like, that's some real shit. I've read stories about hitchhikers that are just like, there was one story I read on But not even hitchhikers. Like someone pretending that they're going to come help you fix your car. Oh, yeah, Because your car is broken down. Yeah, yeah. Gnarly. Or people having a trap set up where their car is broken down. Right. Well, yeah. Same I read thing. something on Reddit recently because I was reading through these threads, and one of them was like, one of the scariest stories I have is like, we drove, me and my wife drove by this hitchhiker, and I remember thinking to myself, I'm never going to pick that hitchhiker up. No way. Like, not only is it just on principle, but it's just a scary looking person. Mm-hmm. And they read in the news the next week that that dude murdered somebody, like a, a car that picked them up. My God. Were victims. Yeah. Me and my mom used to pick people up sometimes when I was younger, but they were like women with children waiting at a bus stop. And my mom occasionally would go like, if it was raining or snowing or something, she'd be like, can I give you a ride somewhere? And I remember a couple of times them being like, you know, it's this woman with her, you know, 11 year old daughter. And they'd be like, you seem like the, <laughs> you're not trying to do anything. My mom's like, I'm really not. I'm just trying to give you a ride. You're waiting in the rain or the snow at the bus stop. Yeah, But like, that's about it. A woman and a child picking up another woman and a child, you know? Yeah. I I don't think I could ever pick someone up on the side of the road and be like, this is, this is safe. I don't... Can you imagine being like an Uber driver, though? Especially at night. Or even a person riding in an Uber. Everything's scary. What the hell? <laughs> Super weird, dude. It's crazy shit. This is like... The thing about the real stories is some of them don't have that shock factor as some of the like fictional ones, but if you think about them, they're like, oh my God. Well, it's really scary. Yeah. Um, there's a thread here about people who spend time outdoors, like campers and hikers and stuff, and what's the scariest encounter with another person? With another person? Yeah. Oh my god! Can we read some? Yeah, you want to? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were gonna be like, oh, with wildlife or like weird noises or bears or with other people. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Yeah. All right, go off, sis. Um, I got woken up. This one's short. I got woken up at night by a park ranger. I'm assuming they're camping, yelling for us to get out of our car, get into our car. Oh fuck! All right, so they got woken up out of their campsite by a park ranger saying, "Get in your car." A grizzly had eaten a woman in her tent one side over, and they had not found the bear yet. Oh, my God. (sighs) Another time I was pulled over by police shortly after I left a campground. I was driving a van. A man had murdered four people in in the same campground that I was at, and the police thought that he was in my van, forcing me to drive... um, him away through the use of a a machete that he was wielding as soon as i stopped the cop opened the door grabbed my arm and yanked me out he thought i was like a hostage and he was saving my life oh my god this fucking guy's been through it god damn jesus that's terrifying yep i love camping i feel like all of the joy has just been sucked out of it so quickly Mm -mm. (laughs) mm-mm mm-mm uh, went on a day camping trip with my friend. 
um, with my friend and her boyfriend that she had recently met on the internet. Lit. We are in the middle of nowhere in Montana. Not a soul around. No cell reception. I'm not from Montana, so I don't really know where the fuck we are. Dude is way bigger than either she or I am. We're both pretty small. The creepiness starts when we're driving around off-roading in my friend's mom's truck looking for a place to park and set up camp. My friend's boyfriend is driving. We come across a potential spot, and she and I get out to scope it out. While we're doing this, he backs up the truck and starts to drive away. I turn to my friend and say, what the fuck is he doing? (laughs) She starts to run after him, waving him down. He finally stops about a quarter mile and lets us in. He doesn't say anything. He just brushes it off as well. He must have not liked that spot. So they don't think anything of it. What? We find a different spot up the road. And this time, I wait until he gets out of the car before I get out. I tell my friend that she should hold on to the keys. He starts getting real quiet and sulky and won't help us set up camp. Then he starts walking away in one direction without saying a word and just keeps walking. My friend runs after him to catch up and ask him if everything is okay. When she catches him and stops to catch her breath, he turns around and starts walking the other direction without saying a word to her. He comes back onto the site and starts rolling around on the ground in the dirt. At this point, I was like, okay, we need to go. She says, everything is fine, and I'm ruining the trip by not having a good attitude and trying to get along. (laughs) Yeah. He keeps rolling and acting bizarre, so she finally agrees to leave. He's still the one driving as we're headed back out of nowhere. He stops the truck and just sits there. Then he gets out of the truck, starts walking around a pile of rocks and wood. I tell her that if he does anything that makes me... Uh, seriously think he's going to hurt us. I have pepper spray and I won't hesitate to use it. Eventually, he gets back in the truck and mumbles something about wanting to check it out. Just wanting to check it out. He didn't kill us and nothing else happened, but I felt really freaking vulnerable out there in the middle of nowhere with no one but my delusional friend and this creepy internet stranger. It actually cost us our friendship because she didn't want uh, to see that there was anything wrong uh, with anything that had happened that day and she couldn't wait to see him again. Hmm. Fun! That sounds like such a fun day trip. That sounds like that sounds like drugs. <laughs> There's literally all these comments that are like drugs. Drugs. 100% drugs. 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 Oof. God. Nope. I'm all set. Um, we can do true creepy people stories. I like creepy people, but not the ones that scare me, just ones that are like a little weird. Mm. Ooh, let's see. Okay. I see the titles. Yeah. I kind of want to, like, the only thing about this site that's kind of shit is that it sorts by, like, recent instead of top. So Aww. I can't, there's no way to, like, um, disturbing, mm, almost kidnapped. Okay, let's read this one. Man on the Road. It was 11 at night. Uh oh, N I T E. N I T E. And I was at and I was at my friend night. Tracy's house. I decided that I should head home before my dad got home. My dad liked salsa dancing and would go dancing late into the night. He usually got home around midnight. Trace, oh, your dad likes to have a good time. Trace lived in a different neighborhood than me. His neighborhood was connected to mine by a uh, a road that gave people existing. This is rough. Gave people exiting the highway access to our neighborhoods and people from our neighborhoods access to the highway. Mm. I began my walk. It was a nice night and I enjoyed the walk. I was soon on the front road and had that had thick woods, maybe 10 to 20 feet off the road and a large hill half a mile down the road. It made it to where you could only see cars from a half a mile away. I was looking around when I saw another man on the side of the highway. He appeared to be looking at me, so I continued to stare at him. When we were both parallel to one another, he made a mad dash across the highway. There were no cars driving um, down the highway, one of which – there were no cars driving down the front roads, but one on the highway. Uh, It slammed on its horn, nearly hitting him. He was unfazed and continued his sprint towards me. So he's across the road. And sprints towards Sprints towards this person, person, who I think is a girl. Um, Seeing this, I began to turn and run away from him. After a couple seconds of running, I looked back to see that he was still indeed chasing me. My heart sank, and my run turned into a mad dash down the center of the road. Off in the distance, I saw lights from a car. As it got closer, I slowed, standing in the middle of the road, and turned around to see my pursuer, but no one was there. I sighed and stepped to the side of the road, began to walk, um, 
feeling pretty stupid, telling myself I made it all up. As I was walking, I heard the shuffle of feet behind me. I turned around and saw the man. Only now he was less than 20 feet away from me and running at me. He was instantly covered. I was instantly covered in a cold sweat. And every time my heart beat, it felt as though I was sending razors down my body. My feet were moving so quickly, I could barely manage not to trip over them. When I turned onto my neighborhood street, I yelled, help, 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 as loud as I could. To my relief, the man did not continue his pursuit into the neighborhood. I looked around and noticed that only one person came out to help me. I looked at him, waved, uh, waved, and then went home. At least I got home before my dad did from salsa dancing. What the fuck? Uh, these are creepy. These are creepy because, like, I don't know. <laughs> that was weird. Scared. Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Nothing. It's just it's some weird, weird stories. I'm scared. Why are you scared? Because some of the scariest things in life are just other people. Mm -hmm, that's true. Some real sickos out there, man. Mm hmm. Okay, I can read this one. This one's called, this one's on a thread called, What is Your True Creepy Story? Because you want to stick to the true ones, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my ex boyfriend. It's about my ex boyfriend. When I was 14 or 15, I dated an older guy. At the time, I thought it was cool that an older per person showed interest in me. He was very good looking, and I was quickly in love. Looking back, it was very creepy and illegal for me to go out with a 23 year old. I was 14. Yeah. We dated for like six months, and he was obsessed with me. Mom, he would not let me go out with my friends, talk to people, and he would message me constantly so I wouldn't forget that he was in charge of the relationship. Wow, that, that's already incredibly that's creepy. Fucking terrible. At one point, I couldn't take his obsession anymore and decided to break up. He told me if I broke up with him, he would tell my parents we were dating. My parents are very strict, and I was naive to the world, so I decided to keep dating him. Mm, boy. He constantly told me that he would kill himself. This is way too real. Whoa. Um, if he had to live without me. Sometimes he would. I felt responsible for his life. He started to follow me after class. Follow me around town and follow me when I hung out with my friends. I felt after, in prison. After like your middle school class? I felt in prison. I could not breathe. On a particular weekend, I lied to my parents and told them I was sleeping at a friend's house. I was not supposed to sleep in my ex's house. And he took me to a party with him. I got very drunk and I just couldn't deal with him anymore. The alcohol killed my inhibition and I broke up with him. He started to yell at me in front of everyone. And a girl I did not know saved me from him. Good. She told me she would take me home and promised me I would be safe. My ex followed the girl's car the entire time. I was terrified he was going to kill me. As he followed the car, he called my parents and told them that I went to a party and got drunk. He forgot to mention that we were dating and that he was the one exposing me to alcohol. Once home, I explained everything to my parents. Long story short, my ex got charged with sexual misconduct, with a mi sexual conduct with a minor, and stalking. I was just a child, but to this day, I still struggle trusting people. My God, <sighs> Jesus Christ, that's dude. terrifying. What the fuck? Mm -mm -mm. Nope. <sighs> Do you want to learn more about skinwalkers? Oh my god okay yeah i guess so happy halloween oh actually i want to see if there's a oh oh skinwalker story okay is this like a whole dedicated like thing to skinwalkers yeah i think so well i mean oh yeah oh my god there's a subreddit yeah the idea of seeing something that sounds like a dog and then you get closer and it sounds like something imitating a dog makes me actually like want to vomit like, it hits me in some weird visceral place that I just want to fucking throw up. Mm-hmm. The story about a skinwalker. Okay. My wife and I were driving through the northern Arizona Highway 89 between oh, Flagstaff. Oh, Arizona's close to here. You say we have skinwalkers close to here. Between Fuck. Flagstaff and Page, it was about 1 a.m. Uh, we were on the third shift of our time and often drove at night to avoid traffic. I saw a few sets of eyes glowing in my headlights a little ways up the road, so I let off the gas, slowing down to avoid hitting an animal on the road. When we drove by, we saw several dogs or coyotes on the side of the road, and I hit the, gra and I hit the gas and drove by. After we passed, my wife said that one of them was running next to the car. What did you, what did you? Just checking on oh. it. One of the coyotes was running next to the car. Um... I looked over and saw it as well, probably 20 feet off the shoulder of the road. I floored it and looked over 
and it stood up on its hind legs <gasps> and kept pace with us for a couple seconds before turning away oh, off road and disappearing. My God! Imagine a coyote just standing up and then running next to your car. Nope. This whole event probably lasted no more than 10 seconds, but it was seriously the most terrifying 10 seconds of my life. Damn. What? Oh, this is that wolf. Oh, that's yeah. the wolf. Here we go. <laughs> I decided that skinwalkers are some of the scariest things that I've heard of, aside from like just pure demons. Are you, are you okay? Yeah. Kermit, would you bark at a skinwalker for me? Probably not. You'd probably cry at it, ask it for food, huh? Um. Do you want me to read a longer one about skinwalkers? Yeah. They're the scariest ones. I've never told this story to anyone, and I don't really intend to tell it again. I have a pounding migraine today, and this thread has kept me good company as I've drifted hey, in and just out. just real quick, do what? we do we have any sponsors? What? <laughs> yeah yeah sorry it's okay this episode is brought to you by the farmer's dog <laughs> not skinwalkers it's almost 40 minutes in sorry i got a little distracted with the skinwalkers <laughs> guys isn't it crazy that so many of us have careful are careful about the food that we ourselves eat but our dogs were just like hey you know eat whatever no farmer's oh. dog says that's a bad idea <laughs> jesus <laughs> what no uh, segue today. The Farmer's Dog you? is a company that helps deliver dogs better, fresh, and delicious food for them. Um, we can attest to this. Like, our dogs will be so difficult Absolutely about eating it. sometimes. And when we switched to the Farmer's Dog, they started to go nuts at feeding time. Marbles specifically. So basically, the Farmer's Dog is a totally different way to feed your dog. You go on to thefarmersdog.com, answer some questions about your pet, and a vet-developed meal plan is created just for your dog specifically. And then when they deliver it to your house, it has like their name on the package and everything. It's really nice. Um, the food arrives at your door in pre-portioned packs ready to open and pour. It's easy to feed them. You don't have to heat it or cook it or anything. It's all it's all done. Um and food matters, guys. Studies show that even adding fresh food to your dog's diet can reduce cancer risk by 90%. Um, personally, I enjoy it because they eat much easier and they're not whiny mm -hmm. about the food we're feeding them. They love it. And they it's, eat it fast. It's a, uh, they, they, they vary, love it. They vary up the, the meals enough for people to, uh, for your dogs to want to keep interest. Uh, so when you do the farmer's dog, they basically create a meal plan and it lasts for however long you want to do it for. They deliver the packages uh, on a regular schedule to your house and then you just pop them in feed them and they're good to go right now you guys can start feeding your dogs better too get 50 percent off your uh, first two-week trial of fresh healthy food by going to the farmers dog.com that's t-h-e f-a-r-m-e-r-s d-o-g.com slash jenna julian and you get free shipping what's he's, happening over he's there? digging at my onesie because he wants me to open it and mm. put him inside it mm. it's not how it works bud Check it out, guys. Hit the link in our description and uh, treat your dog to some good food. Also, guys, if you're thinking about building a website, Squarespace is the best way to do it. If you need a domain, website, or online store, do it with Squarespace. Um, Pixar, Lyft, Airwalk, Michigan, Nike, all those big brands created their sites with Squarespace. Now you can get yours started. Uh, their templates and options for templates are amazing. Uh, you'd be surprised by how many different like builds you can start your website with uh, without doing any work at all. They have amazing templates. And my favorite part about Squarespace is the 24-7 customer support, award-winning customer support. No matter what late hour of the night you're building your website, they are there to help you with it. Um, in my opinion, that's what makes Squarespace stand out. Internet hours. Yeah. So if you're ready to start your own business, guys, do it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And right now when you go to squarespace.com slash Jonah Julian, you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. S Q U A R E S P A C E dot com slash Anna Julian. Check it out or click the link below and you guys will be on your way. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. Permit, you want to hear about skinwalkers? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm like, these are really scary to me. Hmm. Yeah. Skinwalkers are creepy. I had never heard of them before this podcast. Yeah, me neither. Okay, this one's kind of long. Let's do it. When I was 10. When I was 
Young I lived with my boy. mother. My we father. were below poverty level. We were poor. We lived up in the mountains around Santa Cruz. My mother California? had a friend. No. Yes. My mother had a friend that owned a large bit of property up there, and he let us. This is way too small. And he let us stay in a trailer. Our trailer was very small, and it was right beside a garden. A chain link fence ran around the garden to keep the dog and the owner, uh, the dog that the owner had out of the garden, along with other animals. Deer and things were very common in the area. Also, inside the fence area was a single room. It was built like a tiny house, but it was only one single room on the inside. The room had electricity, and since our actual trailer didn't, we spent a lot of our time in that room. I was super into video games. Aw, cute. There was one thing you should know right now. This small fenced in area was only a small part of the property. Most of it was heavily forested. Also, I refused to leave the fenced uh, area because the owner's dog had been mistreated by children in the past and was very sketchy towards me all the time. Mm-hmm. Poor dog. Uh, if I was alone, it would bite at me, even through the fence. The fence was tall, at least seven feet high, and wasn't movable. So as long as the gate was closed, I was safe. That said, tiny bit of the property was where we were. Uh, there's no one else around for miles and miles and miles. So there's just a lot of acres of woods mm-hmm. on the property. Now, I tell you all of this because I think it's important you understand what kind of scene this was before I really get into the story. We have a fenced in location that seems fairly safe. It, uh, it contains a trailer and a single room with power that's not connected to the trailer, nothing around for miles. Uh, my mom's van is parked out front of the gate um, to the fenced area and not a single unpaved uh, and one single unpaved road leads from the garden for about a mile to the main house. So they're a mile away from the property house that Damn. they're staying with. Now, um, I brought friends up there to sleep over here and there. We all thought it was pretty cool, kind of like camping out. Besides, we would get our own room to stay in and play video games all night. It was like a dream come true. The downside was simple. When it got dark out, it got really dark out. No city around and the trailer would not be lit up. There was no bathroom to use in the room, so you would have to walk out into the dark garden in order to get the trailer, get to the trailer to use it. Odd things kept happening from uh, from time to time. It was always something that could be somewhat easily explained away though. Noises like people working at night sometimes. Or once me and a friend were sitting out in the garden and we saw a shadow as big as a small bear bound up a tree, but the tree didn't shake like there was weight on it. The dog also creeped me out, you know, an angry dog. And I was a kid. That's pretty normal. Now I'm a scaredy cat. I always have been, to be honest. I don't know why I even come to this subreddit. Um, I have trouble walking through the, a lit house if I'm all alone. My friends, however, tend to be more outgoing, just the uh, kinds of people I get along with. This time I had friends over. Um, this oh, one friend, he, uh, okay. His name was Jacob. We were staying up all night and playing Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Oh, hell yeah. And Knuckles on my Sega Genesis on an old ratty television. We started playing as the sun went down. And by the time we were finishing up the game, it was about 2 a.m. That's when we heard it. We turned off the game, getting ready to find something else to play. And there was a rumbling in the woods behind the room we were in. Like somebody was rolling something really heavy around on the ground. We hadn't heard it before because the noise from what we were... Uh, playing was loud, like the video game itself, like the TV was loud. When we heard it, immediately I got goosebumps. Jacob was not really worried by it. But it's not like there was uh, someone else's house or yard right over there. It was forest for miles. And it sounded like someone was constructing something or dragging or rolling something really big. Eventually, Jacob convinced me to just play some more games. I agreed, on the condition that we turn the volume up so we didn't... So, sorry... Turn the volume down. Oh, okay, so we could hear. Bitch. We started playing. No, turn that shit up. Yeah, that's what I thought she was like, <laughs> I ain't trying to hear that block it out. scary shit in the woods. Turn that shit up. Um, we started playing and I didn't even notice the noise stop because I was getting engrossed. A couple hours later, Jacob said he had to use the bathroom, which they have to walk Just pee from your the pants, room dog. Pee to your the pants. dark trailer get a water bottle or something i was feeling fine by then so i was i was fine when he left to the trailer to relieve himself he was taking a while so eventually i decided to go back on and check on him besides i could use the bathroom and grab a snack while i was at it i opened the door to leave and he was just standing at the doorway right outside facing it scared the shit out of me i asked him what he was doing and he just stood there blocking the exit i realized he must have sneaked up to the door because i could not hear uh i didn't hear anything and i could hear him walk away from the room 
but I hadn't heard him walk back up to it. Okay, I'm going to throw up. It was super quiet. No noises from a city. No houses. I should have just been able to hear it, but I couldn't. He refused to say anything or respond. He just stood there. I told him he was being really creepy, but it was not unlike him to try and scare me like this. Finally, I decided to just go to the trailer and use the bathroom myself, partially because I knew my mother was uh, asleep in there. Um, I told him what I was doing, then moved past him. When I pushed him out of the way, his skin felt freezing to the touch. Mm. I jumped a little bit, but it was a cold night, and we had been, he had been sitting out there for probably 30 minutes, so I figured that was to be expected. I walked as quick as I could over to the trailer. He followed me, like right on my tail. It was very unnerving. I joked a little, saying he already surprised me by scaring me at the door. The joke is over. Finally, I arrive at the trailer, and I walk in. He didn't follow, just stayed at the doorway. I checked on my mom, who was fast asleep, then turned to go to the bathroom. Now, it being a porta potty we keep the bathroom door shut because it smells bad. When I reach for the door and try to open it, it's locked. A very nervous voice came from behind the door. Uh, I'm in here. I quickly turned to look at Jacob, but the door was still open and there was nothing out there but pitch black night. I freeze in terror. I would have heard the bathroom... I just got chills. I would have heard the bathroom door open if, uh, if he had come in behind me and gone that way. There's no way he would have done it quietly. It creaks like a motherfucker. I yelped so loud that my mom woke up startled. I stared at the doorway, unable to bring myself to move a muscle. She got up, walked over there and looked out, not seeing anything. She closed the door and asked me what the hell was wrong. By now, Jacob was coming out of the bathroom and acting perfectly normal, but a bit confused. I explained what had happened. Jacob said he was taking a long time in the bathroom. Basically, neither of them believed me, no matter how much I insist of what I saw. My mom is sure that I just got sleepy and imagined it. Jacob thought I was trying to prank him. So my mom gets out a big flashlight, walks us back to the room, tells us to go to sleep, then leaves and goes back to the bed herself. Uh, The room doesn't have any windows or anything. So after a while, I calm back down, telling myself that my mom was right. I must have had a weird walking dream or something. Jacob insists he was in the bathroom the whole time, and I'm inclined to believe him because there's no way to really get around without being hurt. So I settle down. I'm a little rattled, but I'm thinking, of like, maybe I can just sleep this off and get through the night. Suddenly, the dog just starts going nuts. Okay, you know, right behind us. You know what? The room is up against the fence, so the dog must have been like right behind the room on the other side. I felt like I jumped so high, I was surprised I didn't hit the roof. Jacob's laughing at me, like, "Ha, dog barking at a squirrel or some shit," and you're shitting yourself. It keeps going like that for a long time, though. Suddenly, the barking stops and gets replaced by whimpering. No, nope. we hear the dog run away. There's about forty uh, seconds of silence before we hear something new. A small scratching sound on the back wall of the room. We both try to be as silent as we can. Eventually, it stops. After five minutes or so of silence, Jacob decides to be brave. He insists he's going out to go get my mother up, tell her something crazy is going on, and we're going to go from there. (sighs) With some kind of divine adult protection, protection, no doubt. I wish he wouldn't leave me alone, but there's no way I'm going out there. Never, ever. He arms himself as best he uh, he could with a tennis racket uh, that we had in the room with us. He takes a couple deep breaths, opens the door, and dashes out. I close it as quickly as I can behind him. In less than 30 seconds, I hear a scream. Not long after, the door flies open and he comes back in looking pale as a ghost. He's breathing like he just ran a marathon and his eyes look as big as dinner plates. I ask what's going on like four times before he could get some words out. He tells me he walked out there, and as he was walking through the garden, as quick as he could, he saw my mom just standing there. He tried to talk to her, but she stared at him with a blank expression. Getting super creeped out because of what had happened to me earlier, he took a couple more steps towards her, telling her that he thought something was in the woods. Suddenly, her her face turned into an awkward smile. Then he realized something terrible. He hadn't noticed sooner because of the darkness of how much of a hurry he'd been in but she was on the other side of the fence. Now, the door to this room does not lock. And as I explained earlier, the room had no windows. He had been trying to move stuff in front of the door as he told this story. But by the end, I was helping him. 
In retrospect, whatever was harassing us se seems to be adverse to actually entering the room or trailer because the Jacob one didn't come in. Right. And he could have. And this room was not sturdy. Either way, we stacked everything we could against the door, thinking um, somehow, like cartoons, that this would totally, definitely keep the creatures out. For the rest of the night, we heard scratches coming from all around the room. I cried. Jacob looking like his mind had left his body with fear. At one point, he thought, uh, I thought I heard it speak too. I heard it from right next to where I was resting against the wall with oh my, my mother's God. voice quietly, the same phrasing and intonation she had used earlier in the night. What's wrong? Followed by immediately go to sleep. The sun must have come up eventually. The scratching eventually stopped. And we heard my mom come to get us. This time actually hearing footsteps. We absolutely refused to leave the room. My mom had to go to the property owner and have him take the door off. When we saw it was actually her, I burst into tears again. We had never had any experiences like these again, and eventually we moved away. But that night still haunts me. I refuse to go out at night unless I'm with a bunch of people and will never live in the woods again. Oh, <sighs> my God. Oh, boy. That was, that was worth it. That was a good one. That is terrifying. Yep. So that was a skinwalker? Well, it looks like that was one skinwalker manifesting in different forms to terrorize or to <laughs> encounter one person. I, I like the lore of the skinwalker, that they take the form the of form something of, else yeah. and that they're like tricksters and shapeshifters and witches or whatever. Dude, when, when, when they see the mom as a ghost, as a night... What is it? A skinwalker? skinwalker. And she's on the other side of the fence that yeah, they can't dude. get out at night. Ugh. I'm with all a grin, set. with an awkward grin. I'm all set. I'm all set with the dog barking and then whimpering and then scratching at the house. I'm all set. I'm just all uh, set. Damn, dude. That was gnarly. That was gnarly. Literally all set. <sighs> yeah, that one's good. That one got me going. And that's in California. I'm I'm upset. Mm -hmm. I want there to be no skinwalkers here. I don't want a chance of seeing one. I really don't. The fuck is that? Supposedly evidence of a creepy figure behind that thing. I don't like any of it. Ooh, God, that looks like a. Ooh, that's creepy. You'd think that they were probably unable to be captured on camera. Or whatever. Yeah, I have no idea. God damn. Th this whole subreddit is like accounts of people saying, I'm pretty sure I saw a skinwalker. Read another one. Um, no, I'm not going to read that one. <laughs> um... All right. It was trying to lure me into the woods. Oh, cool. Background. I'm a female, and this occurred two years ago when I was 18. It takes Sick. place in Maine. Sick. Yeah, great. Every summer, my family and I go up to camp in the Dedham, Ellsworth, Maine. Um, it's about a three-hour drive from my house, and the camp itself is about an hour from the nearest town. I've been going to this camp my entire life. My family owns it, and we had never had an incident like this before happen. I was watching TV in the middle of the night. Well, you're camping? No, no, it's like a. they just went to like a cottage or something. Maybe. I was watching TV in the middle of the night. Both my brothers and parents had gone to bed. <laughs> First mistake. I heard a noise coming from the kitchen and realized that the dogs needed to go outside to do their business. So I took my brother's two pit bulls and my Athen pincher, tiny dog, outside after turning the porch light on. I walked around to the front yard and I let the dogs off leash. It's so incredibly dark into the woods in Maine that the porch light really only illuminated the porch and nothing else. So I tried to keep an eye on them. I was momentarily distracted when I saw a loon uh, or a wild bird a duck. on the lake. They make really pretty noises. Yeah? Yeah. When I looked back, I saw that the pit bulls were both looking at something in the woods. I couldn't see what it was, but I assumed that they had seen a squirrel or a raccoon. It was then that I realized they didn't see that I didn't see Alfie anywhere. She was an awfully small dog, and she's completely black. I called her a few times and heard some soft whimpering right where the dogs had been looking earlier. Oh, come on. I took a couple, a couple steps in that direction and called for her again. 
worry that she may have gotten her paw stuck in between rocks or gotten stuck in a snake hole. Suddenly I feel something moving behind me. I whipped around and it was Alfie. She had been staying close to me this whole time. I just hadn't seen her. So naturally I was thinking, if Alfie's here, what the fuck's in the woods? I took another step forward and the pipples began to growl. They were slowly advancing and were now on either side of me, looking right into the blackness of the woods. I quickly pick up Alfie and began to back up very slowly. I'm not sure what was in there, but as are a lot of animals in Maine, I figured the dogs knew better than I did since I couldn't see anything. Right, uh, right as I turned around, I heard the most absolutely bone-chilling thing I've ever heard in my life. Coming from the direction of the woods, I heard something slash someone call Alfie's name. No. It sounded as almost if, if, if it were trying to mimic me calling Alfie's name moments earlier, but it was all wrong. That... <gasps> the voice sounded really distorted and almost seemed to wail. I freaked the fuck out, ran inside with the dogs. To this day, I had no idea what was out in the woods. My camp is essentially a log cabin overlooking a lake, and our nearest neighbor lives at least a half a mile in the opposite direction. Stop. Stop. <sighs> Skinwalker stories, dude. I didn't know these things were a thing. Like the, the, I'm so glad, the imitating though. of the human voice is what gets... Like the, the, the amount that I've like been camping out in the woods or like I grew up at my cottage, mm-hmm. like all of that. I would go outside in the dark all the time. No fear of anything. I like loved it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you get occasionally scared if you thought an animal was there. But like if I had known that that was a thing, like that was like lore that I was aware of. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to go outside anymore. Yeah. Thanks, Skinwalkers, TM. Like, the fact that they, like, imitate people and animals is, like, that makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah. That the, is, the like, fact the that scariest they take the shape, thing I've That they can heard. take the shape of, like, you, for instance. Like, if I'm out in the woods, we're camping together, and you're in one place, but I see you right in front mm-mm, of me, mm-mm. and it's just, like, a blank stare on mm-mm. your face, that's... Like can another they hurt being, you though? I don't know. I've Will never you look up there like Wikipedia read, thing again. Uh, can skinwalkers hurt you? Because according to the other kid's story, like it it could hurt a dog or an a animal. Navajo, the Navajo believe that if you lock eyes with a skinwalker, they can. Tight, sick. Oh my god, I love that. I love that for us. <laughs> Some Navajo also believe that skinwalkers have the ability to steal the skin or body of a person. The Navajo oh. believe that if you lock eyes with the skinwalker, they can absorb themselves into your body. Oh! But maybe that's how they take the form of like a person and then they like leave. Okay, can you read that whole thing? Because I'm, I'm interested because I need to know how to defend myself. Okay. In Native American legends, the skinwalker is a person with a supernatural ability to turn into any animal he or she desires. Oh, it's a person. Okay. Yeah, they uh, they must be, uh, though they must be wearing a pelt of the animal to transform. Similar lore can be found in cultures throughout the world and is often often referred to as shape shifting by anthropologists. Navajo skinwalker. The Yi Nal Dushi. Wait, so wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold sorry, on. go ahead. So in Game of Thrones, what's it called when uh, he's a crow, a one eyed raven? He can change into animals. It's like that, but like Bran doesn't have to wear a pelt. Yeah, and he's not physically there. It's only in his mind. Like he's transferring so his brain. According to, to this lore, his it's, conscience. is the person alive and they have I, to wear I got to get to it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm confused. Possibly the best documented skinwalker beliefs are those relating to the Navajo nation. Yi Nablushi literally with it, literally translates to with it, he goes on all fours in the Navajo language. Uh, Yi Nablushi uh, is one of several varieties of Navajo, which specifically, uh, sorry, which, um, Specifically, um, a practitioner of the witchery way, as opposed to a user of curse objects or a practitioner of the frenzy way. Technically, the term refers to um, Aunt Jinihi, who's using rarely her powers to travel in animal form. In some versions, men or women have attained the highest level of priesthood are called klizyati, or pure evil. That... Um, then they commit the act of killing a member of the family, of their own family. Oh my God. And then they have thus gained the evil powers that are associated with skinwalkers. Um, the Aunt Jinihi are human beings who have gained superpower 
by breaking a cultural taboo. Specifically, a person is said to gain the power to become Yi Nadlushi upon initiation into the witchery way. Both men and women can become that and therefore become possible skinwalkers, but men are far more numerous. It is generally thought that only childless women can become witches. Although I'm a childless woman. Although it is more frequent, oh. more frequently seen as a coyote, wolf, owl, owl or fox, or crow, the Yi, yi Nad Lushi is said to have the power to assume the form of any animal they choose, depending on what kind of abilities they need. Witches use the form uh, for expedient travel, especially the Navajo equivalent of the Black Mass, a perverted. Uh, the Black Mass, a perverted song, and the central rite of witchery way used to curse instead of to heal. They also may transform to an escape, to escape from pursuers. Some Navajo also believe that skinwalkers have the ability to steal the skin or body of a person. The Navajo believes that if you lock eyes with a skinwalker, they can absorb themselves into your body. It is also said that skinwalkers avoid the light and that their eyes glow like animals do, but when in human form. So you're seeing like a glowing wolf's eye in a human. Uh... A skinwalker is usually described as naked, except for an animal skin. Uh, some Navajos descri describe them as a mutilated, sorry, mutated version of the animal. So like the way the way that the woman was describing her dog, but mm -hmm. like the hind legs were weird. Yeah. Something is off about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the skin may just be a mask like those which are the only garment worn in the witch's song. Because animal skins are used primarily by skinwalkers, the pelt of animals such as bears, coyotes, wolves, and cougars are strictly tabooed. Sheepskin and buckskin are probably two of the few hides used by Navajos. The latter is only for ceremonial purposes. Legend has it skinwalkers can have the power to read human thoughts. They also possess the ability to make any human Bitch. or animal noise that they choose. Bitch. A skinwalker may use the voice of a relative or a cry of an infant to lure victims out of the safety of no, their homes. No, 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 That, okay, where did I hear that? Uh, recently, it's been going around on Twitter. That that was a thing that I literally forgot was a thing. What? So I forget which serial killer it was had used a recording of an infant crying to put outside of people's homes to lure them outside of their house. That is so beyond twisted. Or lure fucked. them to the door. So if you're ever home and you hear an infant crying outside of your door, call the fucking police. Don't open the door. Jesus. That was, I forget which serial killer it was, but it was like part of their MO at one point. That's like terrifying and brilliant and scary yeah. and fucked. So fucked. Um, according to Navajo myth, the only way to successful, successfully shoot a skinwalker is to dip bullets into white ash. Okay, I don't have bullets or white ash. Well, you need both. Often How about people like a attempting nice, to shoot a skinwalker what if I tell find them their knock, weapon knock jamming or frozen. Uh, Whoa. I want to read an account of someone trying to shoot a skinwalker and their gun jams. Yeah, right. Gun jammed Julian, skinwalker. I need to know more about them. How to protect slash kill skinwalkers. Oh my God. There's people out here trying to kill quote unquote skinwalkers and it's like their neighbor's cat. In Navajo culture, it is said that the only way to kill a skinwalker is oh. to say the witch's name. Ah! What's their name? I don't know. How are we, how are we supposed to get to know them before they, what the hell? Oh, other times if the gun fires, the rounds have no effect. If spotted, the skinwalker will run away, and if chased, his footprint will not be present, even if only a few feet away. Also, it is if it is fired at even at point blank range, it would have no effect and may attack or run off. Did you just hear that? <gasps> that was a skinwalker. Don't. That's scary. That was a dog next I'm door. I'm pretty sure that was Halo. That was Halo, but it could have been the skinwalker Julian. pretending to be Halo. And here Halo was just at our door and we we're like, hey. Dude, Halo could have been a skinwalker that whole time. Ah. Kermit, are you a skinwalker? Boy, you better not. I suggest bringing a fistful of dried sage, lighting it, and drawing a circle around your campsite with a burning sage near you. So just, if you're going to go camping, just sage it real quick. Because skinwalkers be like. I'm scared. But we, yeah, I, kinda want to I still more. don't, I still don't understand if they can hurt you or not. Well, I haven't read many accounts of them attacking people. Like, what is this? This is very old. Most commonly male are skinwalkers. 
It's a type of shape-shifting witch that uses enchanted animal hides that initiate a transformation into any animal they desire, but the most common animal forms are those of a wolf, coyote, fox, dog, I get or that cougar. much. So you're saying it's a living person yeah. that's doing this. Why? Okay. Don't they have the internet at this point? Can't they like watch some Netflix? Why are they out skinwalking? Skinwalker most often kills out of greed, anger, envy, spite, or revenge. What the hell? So skinwalkers kill people, but it's a person killing people. Let's see. Um, Navajo. Uh, when it comes down to punishing the skinwalker, if it is caught in the act, rarity indeed. Navajo law is very st uh, direct and straightforward when it comes to witchcraft. When a person becomes a witch, they immediately forfeit their humanity and their right to exist. And thus the skinwalker can be killed without any legal what? or moral That's like Salem witch trials. They're like, we're, we're just, you're not even a person. We're going to kill you. That's terrible. In regards to magical practices, skinwalkers are said to gather in small groups in dark caves in order to initiate new members, plot their activities, kill people from a distance with black magic, engage in necrophilia with the female corpses. What? And to commit cannibalism, incest, and grave robbery. Oh my God, this just got really dark. I'm just I'm searching I'm searching the word kill for this long article to see if you can kill them or if they kill people. The skinwalker is described as being ex extremely fast, agile, and impossible to catch. Attempting to shoot or otherwise kill the skinwalker are usually unsuccessful, and they may even seek revenge. That seems fair. The skinwalker is They're adept in the its shit use out of, of you, black so you magic. You can't defend yourself or protect yourself. Seems fair. Yeah. What the hell? Another spell that the skinwalkers use to kill is done by acquiring some of the victim's hair, wrapping it around a pot pot shard, and then placing it into a tarantula's hole. Live rattlesnakes may be released into the victim's dwelling or his bed. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Defeating a skinwalker requires the assistance of a powerful shaman. In those spells and rituals. Any shamans in the comments want to like protect us just in case? We got any shamans? I'll take a paladin. So apparently if you have bullets and you dip them in white ash, which I don't even know what white ash, what's white ash? I don't know what, just what you burn to get white ash. What? How, what's white ash? <laughs> this, is a, this is a collaborative podcast, guys. <laughs> what? White ash. Oh, okay. Species of tree native to eastern and central North America, um, Australia, Texas, southern Oklahoma. Okay. So it's it comes from species of tree. Fraxinus americana, the white ash or American ash, is a species of ash tree to native tree native to eastern and central North America. Okay, so it's like it's from an ash tree. So before you grab your piece, just dip the magazine and bullets in some white ash. Yeah, totally. And then you're good to go, pretty much. Definitely, for sure. God damn, dude. Well, if you guys have any skinwalker stories that you'd like to share with us, I, we'd be more than happy to read them in the comments. <laughs> I have my protection. Peachy, are you protecting If I was mommy? calling Peachy or Carmen, I was like, Peachy, and then heard someone from the forest go like, Peachy? I'd be like, fuck Whoa. off. <laughs> I would yell out in the woods and go, fuck you, skinwalker. And then I would leave. Just don't look him in the eye. I won't. I'll blindfold myself. I go, you rude. And you got a bad attitude. Why don't you go watch some Netflix like the rest of us? This is funny. What? <laughs> this post on the skinwalkers. It's like top post of all. It's the second top post. Ajit Pai is secretly a skinwalker that's trying to end net neutrality so less people can have access to this subreddit. <laughs> It's funny. Yeah. Um, I suggest checking this stuff out if you guys want a, a good little spook. I feel like the first couple stories were a little the weird and more real. Mm -hmm. um, but then when we got to Skinwalker, things things picked up pretty fast. I'm terrified of them. Just like your dog will pick up it, their appetite really fast once you start feeding them the farmer's dog. Wow. Well, thank you guys for listening. I'm just so confused that they're like they're living people that are using powers but like why like why would a skinwalker go torment those two little boys in the middle of nowhere or like why would a skinwalker imitate that lady with ms's dog like you know what i mean like 
It's a person. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me if they're like operating within like their tribe and they want to seek revenge against another tribe or something. Like that makes sense to me. But like just tormenting people for no reason doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. That it made more sense when they were like a, a non-living thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or just like an entity. But the idea that it's a person behind there is like, what are you doing? Stop it. Get some help. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> it's always like people get the weird feeling that they're being like chased or followed. And then it turns out that they turn around and see a skinwalker. Yeah, no, I'm all set. That's terrifying. Yeah. No, thanks. Um, so we have, what, we have two more episodes of October podcasts. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Do we have two more? Let's do scary stuff. Yeah, so we want your guys' advice. So this one's going out the uh, 15th, yeah. So we have the 22nd and the 29th of scary podcast opportunities. So give us ideas, uh, if you have any, of what to record for spooky podcasts. And let me know like how we can best prepare them. I have my protect. What they if this, will protect. What if this one's a skinwalker, though? No, 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 no. Kermit. Vermit. Julian! What? No. Jenna doesn't like the skin walkers. They're my protection. Hmm. Well, thank you guys uh, for hanging out. Hopefully you, you were entertained by this. I'm scared. Hopefully you were scared by this. And we'll see you guys next week for more spooky stuff. See you guys on Twitch in the meantime. And... Uh, Remember to send in those suggestions. Well, we're going to start really sweeping the comment section, like super sweeping it. So just in general, suggestions in the comments will be read, like a lot of them. So give us suggestions. What? You're funny. And we'll see you guys later. Have a good week. Bye.